Finally, a base of our own. Soon we'll have eyes on every corner of the system. Well done, Captain. I heard about that. While my lawyers scratch their heads wondering how we deal with human salvage, I'm leaving the researchers in hibernation. Aside from the automated security, did you meet any resistance at the station? <sighs> I knew it. They've been shadowing us since Monarch, maybe even longer. I've been less than honest with you. Your assignments weren't strictly about the salvage business. You might have figured that out already. After the Monarch job, I started connecting the dots. I didn't like the picture. Then what we found at Station 1084 confirmed my fears. You and I have stumbled onto something big. Something none of us were meant to know. Maybe the worst. Ask yourself why a skeleton crew was studying that Alta Vitae gas in secret. Ask yourself why stockpiles were hidden on a planet full of monsters. Before we go any further, I want you to keep an open mind. Can you do that for me, Captain? Aliens. I'm talking about aliens. They're the ones responsible for the deaths at 1084, and who knows what else. We have to put a stop to it. I knew it. Aliens from other worlds been visiting Halcyon. At least one of your crew can keep an open mind. But this isn't some Aetherwave serial millstone. This is reality. I'm saying it's aliens. I'm not asking you to like it. I'm not even asking you to believe it. But I need to act on this threat to the colony, and I can't do it alone. Right. I'm done. I'm officially tuning you out until such time as I hear the words payment and or shooting. Damn, she's serious. Tragic, ain't it? What age does to your mental faculties? The crew is skeptical. That's good. I don't want you walking into the unknown with blindfolds on. I assume you have questions? If we're gonna see this through, I'll need your trust and commitment. Now's the time for setting doubts aside. Conspiracy. One carried out with the help of human collaborators, assuming they haven't all been replaced. This is an invasion of our very cells. That damned gas is mixing our nuclein with Halcyon biology to twist us, change us. Make us more like those monsters on Monarch. No kidding. That's how they want it. When I lined up the evidence in my spreadsheet, there was only one possible conclusion looking back at me. This is my data talking, not my anxiety or lack of sleep. If you don't believe me, go pay a visit to the Puppet Master who's working against her own kind. Dr. Chartrand is the crooked psychopath behind the gas experiments. She sold out her species, and I need you to put a bullet through her skull. She's a research scientist and a damn good one. Before UDL poached her, she engineered a 0.2% increase in cysty pig juiciness. Now she's doing the same thing with humanity. Her fingerprints were all over Station 1084. You saw what she did to her team. You've got me all wrong. I just want to add savior of humanity to my resume. I've got ambitions outside of this office, you know. Besides, this way Sublight gets first dibs on alien salvage. You don't just turn down an exclusive deal on extraterrestrial scrap. That's amateur shit. Do you usually come across innocent people trapped in suspension tanks? 
Because some of us would call that excessive. Remember, the tanks were just the shit she left behind. Just imagine the experiments she carted off to her next lab. We're far beyond theories. Chartrand's logs, the gas, the suspension tanks, how much proof do you need? Wake up, Captain. An invasion needs collaborators working from the shadows. She has access to the board, unlimited funds, and a colony full of sheep. This key card will get you through the front door of her Byzantium estate. Don't ask how I got it. You might not like the answer. By now, the other side knows what you're doing. Don't trust anything Chartrand says. She's compromised down to the bone. Maybe even deeper than that. Ah, oh, your face is a site for sore ocular processors, Captain. Or rather, your headgear is. We have successfully arrived at Phineas's orbital lab, Captain, and we are still in one piece. Shall I congratulate myself, or would you like to do the honors? Remember that you are not insured.
the shoulder if I weren't behind a wall of bulletproof glass. I don't know how you did it, but Hiram Blythe just sent me everything I needed. According to Hiram's message, Minister Clark has ordered a suspicious amount of dimethyl sulfoxide. It's almost as if he's hoarding the colony's remaining supply. Typical elitist, hoarding supplies during a time of scarcity. Once I have those chemicals, we can revive the Hope's colonists and put some decent people in charge. So, good news. You're going to Byzantium and stealing those chemicals. Exciting! Aloysius Clark, Minister of Earth. Virtually every colony requires the presence of a Minister of Earth. Clark is complicit in every one of the board's crimes. Whenever the board issues some new decree, you'll find Clark's signature on the dotted line. If I had time in several blackboards, I could explain the details to you, but to put it briefly, dimethyl sulfoxide is the reason you're alive today. The chemical is absolutely essential to reviving the Hope's colonists. I need you to steal as much as you possibly can. The more, the better. If you don't bring me enough chemicals, I might not be able to save the Hope's colonists, and then nothing will stop the board from destroying this colony. Ah, yes, the details. I'm not about to ask you to rampage through Byzantium trading bullets with the board's agents. We'll have to resort to subterfuge. Carmen Imagawa. She's my contact in Byzantium. Meet her at the docks. She'll have all the necessary intelligence you require. I'm giving you my old nav key to Byzantium. You'll need it to land in the Golden City. Remember, you're looking for dimethyl sulfoxide. Big green bubbling vessel with a warning label. I'll take as much as you can find. You can trust her if that's what you're asking. Imagawa is the finest special agent in Byzantium that money can buy. My money, anyway. Of course, of course. What's on your mind? Some crew members are causing a disturbance on the ship. We are now in orbit above Byzantium, Captain.
Do you mind? I'm needing someone. Shh. No names, okay? The Phoenix is a wanted man and the board has eyes everywhere in Byzantium. Yeah, that's my code name for, you know, our mutual friend. Oh, I'm Golden Eagle. Um, yeah, I named you Cuckoo. It makes sense if you think about it. Because I didn't know who you were, and old earth cuckoos would routinely trick other birds into feeding them. Can we pick our own code names? I want to be Rolling Thunder. Wait, no, I got it. Dropkick Millstone. Yeah. I was really trying to stick with the bird theme. How about Bullfinch? Wow, that is so much better. Bullfinch Millstone. Okay, but adding your last name kind of misses the point. Oh, 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 can I be chicken? Because chickens will adopt any critter's baby and keep them warm. You sure you don't want to be raven or sparrowhawk? Aw. Okay, okay. Chicken it is. Anyway, you're looking to make contact with Minister... Uh, Magpie, right? I should warn you, it won't be easy. He spends most of his time in his estate, which is heavily guarded. Afraid not. He almost never leaves his home, and his guards never leave him. Can't say I blame him. It's scary out of doors. I mean, can you even count how many times we've been shot at? What work specialists, huh? Our mutual friend is really branching out. Whoa, I'm not one of your B and E specialists. I just provide intelligence. Some of the guards hang around Billingsley's house of inebriation between shifts. Maybe you could do some reconnaissance there. You know, swipe a key while nobody's looking. Just remember, you didn't hear it from me. I've always been fascinated by birds. If you ever research Earth species, there are thousands of them. So colorful and distinct. Here we got 11 flavors of terror rays and not much else. That kind of variety? I mean, gosh, seems almost impossible. The other thing about birds, though, is their environmental indicators. Exactly. I started thinking about everything we see around Halcyon, and all the things we don't see. For starters, you rarely come across anyone living in Byzantium who wasn't born here, even though we get ships in all the time. Doesn't that seem strange to you? And then there's the way nothing gets fixed. There used to be a suggestion box around here. People would drop ideas in. Nothing ever came of them, of course. Sounds like my old job. I had all these bang-up ideas, you know? Like making everybody haul their own damn boxes. Never did catch on, though. That's what I mean. Everyone needs a suggestion box so they can voice their thoughts. So what if nothing changes? I mean... There's a shredder at the bottom of the box, so I don't know what you'd expect to happen. But one day the shredder broke. No one came to fix it, and since it wasn't working, we didn't have anywhere to file our complaints. So you can imagine how messy things got. I bet your repair folks couldn't find parts. Back in Edgewater, I'd have to take something apart just to put another thing back together. Might have been the paperwork. Here? You have to append forms to your forms, and law help you if there's a single dash out of place. At first, management put up an out-of-order sign, but that just seemed to worry people, like they were advertising something wasn't working. They eventually took the whole suggestion box sign down so that people didn't have any expectations about it. But they never fixed it, never replaced it. Doesn't that seem odd to you? Except that's not how they go. At least that's not how they're supposed to go in Byzantium. The whole episode made me wonder, if they can't fix something as simple as a suggestion box, what else aren't they fixing? After a while, 
I got connected with our mutual friend and started using my position here to feed him information when I could. That's it, really. Good luck, Cuckoo. Facial mask and cream leaves you feeling Nothing fresh and tingling. Do not operate heavy machinery for hey, two you. hours after yeah, application. Hey, you! Want to be famous? Kid, you got presence. Natural magnetism. Know what I mean? There's those street smarts. Just the right amount of rough around the edges. Next time! We'll have you say that over the rim of a Tripistout. Product placement, baby. Listen, uh, you got an agent? Some kind of representation? Fresh, natural talent. I know it when I see it. Listen, you got a real special quality, raw energy. I see you in pictures, kid. I'm making a feature, Space Pirates of Moros Prime. It's gonna be a hit, but we still need a star, and I think you got the chops. Ah! Captain! You're gonna be in pictures! Already got an entourage, huh? Way to get ahead of the game. So what do you say? You ready for the chance of a lifetime? Terrific! We're holding auditions at the studio. Head to Odeon Pictures and take the elevator. You're going all the way to the top, baby! Prosperity Plaza. More like Consumption Junction. Get it? You think I'd get arrested if I climbed up on that to get a look at the drinks? And the microwave in two and a half seconds. Floor's pocket. I've always loved that sculpture. Oh, look at you with the hip. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Don't speak. Hold that posture for a moment while I admire you. You have a natural contraposto, my dear. The way you rest your weight against your hip suggests a certain rugged charisma possessed only by the mighty primal and the well-traveled spacer. Splendid. I love it. Your walk, your posture, the cut of your clothes, you carry yourself with the bearing of a noble, but you dress like a barbarian. How deliciously outré! I'm Celeste Jolicoeur, and you, my dear, are exactly what Byzantium needs.
I'm an artist, darling, not a tweed merchant. I don't sell things. I holidate the world with art. I'm working on a new line of clothing that will shock this city to its core, and I'd like your help. What do you say, my dear? Care to make history with me? Marvelous! You and I are gonna wake this city up like a cold splash of wine to the face! What I need is a survey of the outside world. What does the common laborer wear? How do the wild-eyed madmen of Monarch dress themselves? I've heard rumors, but I require samples. Also, I expect you to model for me. My dear, fashion is a performance art. An outfit without a body is like an instrument without a player. I'll need you to model for me the following. The apparel of an iconoclast, the armor of a marauder, and a full ensemble of spacer gear. Helmet included. And when I say spacer gear, I mean an outfit worn by real spacers. None of that garbage spacers choice pedals. You have the bearing and demeanor of a born model. You're going to absolutely murder this job. Fabulous! I can't wait to see what you dredge up. You don't gotta be so forward about my reasons, Captain. Let me get a good look at you. Turn around, please, darling. My word. Such muscular shoulders. You're a vision, dear. Uh, I am no such thing, ma'am. Nonsense. You're absolutely lovely. Chin up now. I have just the thing for you. Let me do a back-of-the-envelope calculation. Materials, labor, licensing and copyright... There. Love? That's the ultimate luxury, darling. Love. <laughs> oh, gracious me. I don't get why that's funny, ma'am. Oh, my cherub! Who woos for love anymore? That's so... precious. All right, Captain. Here is the absolute best I can do for you. There are some things I simply cannot skimp on, darling. Such a lovely young lady deserves the best. Now stand back. Back, back! I'll enter the settings and get these machines spinning. You'll be broke to bespoke in nearly an hour. And there we are, my darling girl. I wish you a splendiferous evening. And if you don't mind my asking, have you any interest in modeling? What? Oh, no, ma'am. All them eyes staring at me? I couldn't. No way, no how. I get scared just thinking on it. I wish you weren't so shy, my Violet. You truly are beautiful. I hope your date sees that as clearly as I. If I were an enterprising spacer in need of a wardrobe... I'd probably head to the Groundbreaker. Oh, can you believe this outfit? It's so handsome, I'm almost afraid to touch it. Why? Well, I guess that's everything then. After all this time? I can... I just have to... actually do it now. Y you know, there's there's a part Jun has been looking for, to fix up the air cyclers. They only carried them on big colony ships, like the Hope. I know. For a while, it, it felt like everything I did was a little bit of help. And it meant I didn't have to ask her to be mine. Not yet. Not for real. Next time we dock with Groundbreaker, I'm doing it. I'll send June a message and ask her over. Oh, 
This is real scary, Captain. I'm grateful for all you've done. I love Byzantium. Where else are you going to find art, culture, working toilets? I'm sure other... If you stop in the engine room, would you ask Parvati to send Sam down to the bridge? So my dad, he told me. I swear, next time we put in the groundbreaker, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna ask her over. Oh, I'm so nervous. I'm having trouble focusing on my work. Captain, I wish to offer my commendations for convincing the UDL's gunship to leave HRS-1084. I did not favor the idea of being stripped and sold for parts. The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. I understand we have decided to continue supporting the outlaw scientist, Dr. Phineas Wells.
hope this fancy soap we got is extra strength. I'm feeling a mite ripe. Is it just me, or is Groundbreaker feeling extra chilly? Maybe you ought to help yourself to a piping hot frozen dinner. Oh, it's Martin. Hey, Martin. Still wearing the hat? How observant. I'm authorized to state that this uniform is more than headgear. It's a state of mind. And our customers know the difference. Oh, and it's not the best choice. It's Spacer's choice. Taste the freedom. A lot of slogans to keep track of. Sometimes I forget. Heard of it? My orientation Aetherwave showed that famous Saltuna cannery. Which I'm sure smells as good as it looks. Yeah. I hope they're gonna be okay. That's a spacious choice, Spear. Take what you have, polish it up, and make the best of it. So, what can I get you? Some soap? Everyone loves soap. Everyone will love you for using it, too. I'm bound to satisfy headgear-related inquiries. Please send any complaints to our Consumer Care Headwear Division. You would never ask if you knew what it's like in here. I mean, why anyone can be a Spacer's Choice Consumer Relations Choice Specialist. Just keep your nose clean and Aim for the moon. Oh, I'm having a stellar day. And not just because I'm legally obligated to say so. Almost as stellar as a spacer's choice is affordable. I can see all of the top quality merchandise in the spacer's choice catalog, which is available here at a reasonable price. Spacer's Choice regrets that we don't sell toothpaste at this time, but we're always working on delivering exciting new products to our customers. Sprat Wash, Mouth Wash, and Manta Floss are among the exciting line of dental goods currently in development. Don't miss out on these deals. You'll find none like them on all a Groundbreaker or anywhere in the Halcyon Colony. Trouble sleeping? Try our Lunar Eclipse Mix. That's two handfuls of pep pills washed down with a hearty swig of two-hour energy brew. 
The blast will send you through the stratosphere and the crash will knock you out gold guaranteed. Add an additional 10% to your purchase today and the proceeds will be donated to Spacer Cares, our premier corporate welfare program. At Spacer's Choice, we care about your health and emotional well-being. That's why we put Martin through six years of vendor school only to make him wear this hat. Even if my contract didn't forbid it, I think, uh, I think it's part of me now. Now, are you ready to make Spacer's Choice Lunar Green Moon Mouth Lozenges a part of you? Lunar Green, the future is Spearmint. I, uh, you know, damn it. No slogan for that one. Uh, look, this hat, my job. It may not seem like much to a brave space captain, but they're all that I have. If there are self-made purgatories, then we all have to live in them. Mine can be no worse than someone else's. Now, if we're done with the chit-chat, I hope you don't mind if I make the most of this short life and try to be the best moon person I can be. It's fine. I should be stronger than this. Thanks for taking an interest. Uh, speaking of interest, can I interest you in some quality budget goods? At Spacer's Choice, we cut corners so you don't have to. Have a look. Renegade Company. Sound a dire. They call it Monarch.
Pick up any more strays while you were out? I suppose if the crew's quarters fill up, we could hang hammocks in the cargo hold. All right. She's on her way. How do I look? Oh, my hands have finally stopped shaking. All right, all right. Deep breath. Here I go. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? Forgive me, Captain. I would rather not discuss Alex Hawthorne today. I am feeling... discombobulated. Was there another topic on your mind? Captain Hawthorne attached 98.4% of the ship's processes to my computer, thereby giving me near total control. I have been programmed to deftly calculate navigation factors through asteroid fields while also operating our ship's toasters. Alex also taught me the concept of a personality. He was quite delighted when I crafted one in order to better engage with him. It was... basic in the beginning. The information in my memory banks says I am an autonomous digital astrogator, created by, redacted, on the date of, redacted, for the express purpose of, redacted. I have not yet decided if I should attempt to uncover the missing information regarding my birth. I asked once, Alex did not build me, and would not say who did. How can I be of assistance? Goodbye. So I told him, Dad, I'm a big girl now, I ain't need your help, I can do it on my lonesome. What did he say to that? Have at it then. 
And he handed me his favorite wrench, the one he used for the canner. It was probably half as tall as I was. He didn't scold you for talking back to him? Nah, he was never like that. I always thought it was funny when I'd get indignant about something. Then he'd watch me do whatever it was, make sure I didn't get hurt, but look at me. All dressed up for once. My father and I were often at loggerheads. He had notions of how... The station should be run. We're now in orbit of a stellar bay, Captain.
like a nice little town. Except for all the dead critters. This place wasn't half so pretty in the cereals. What are you buying? You meditate today? If not, you should. What are you buying? Thank you. 